This is IBM Museum. So in a follow-up to a prior video where I covered the PS2 Model 2526 and Model 3026 Type 1 and Type 2 planers, in those instances I had a Kingston 386 Now module on those planers that I'm going to feature in later videos going through and testing those units. But this is also a little bit of a follow-up to a, an earlier video of the Intel PowerPack unboxing. And in that case, I had a board that was suitable for a Model 50 or Model 60. And it had both a memory adapter in it Microchannel in that case for the uh, Model 50 and 60, and then it had the Intel Snap in 386 upgrade module, and that was the CPU daughter card board that went in the 286 socket and uh, was an Intel 386SX 20 megahertz CPU. And on the back of that carton was some images of the, the two different adapter styles, whether it was a microchannel system or um, an AT bus system, typically called the ISA bus, Industry Standard Architecture. And then it had the various CPU snap-in 386 modules that could be in the box as well for the different systems. And that package had variations that it covered from the IBM AT, the PS2 Model 2526, Model 3026, the model, uh, PS2's Model 50 and 60, which are microchannel units, of course, being above the model number of 50, and the PS2 Model 50Z. The PowerPack unboxing video that I did, it had an adapter in there that, that covered the, the models 50 and 60. And that CPU upgrade uh, fit on those, uh, the planer for those systems. Now in this case, it this is the module, the Snap-in 386 module from Intel that goes into the Model 2526 and Model 3026, as it, it's labeled here, M30-286. And I just wanted to show that um, I, I need to get the Dallas module still modified. Here's the Dallas module. But this um, daughter card seen in the socket as well, that 286 socket that's right below here, also shows how how close the tolerance is to that that Dallas module, and this is a Type One planer that it, it is in. For the Type Two planer, this would actually rotate nine degrees clockwise, so it would still be it would still be away from the socket for the floating point coprocessor to be installed. The Intel modules are also a little bit different that they just have the the 386SX CPU on them um, and it's it's Intel only went up to the 20 megahertz speed with their CPUs. On the Kingston modules they went even up to 33 megahertz as I was showing on that prior video and it also had a socket for a 387 SX or 387SL floating point coprocessor in that daughter card as well. There's a socket on there. In this instance, um, if you want to add a numeric coprocessor in addition to having the Intel module, you would just use a, uh, uh, a 287 or a 287XL uh, coprocessor. And I wanted to point out also for the 
PS2, Mall 2586, Mall 3286, uh, PS2 models 50, 50Z, and 60. Those all had 286 CPUs that ran at 10 megahertz as it came from the from the factory. Now on the um, of course, the Mall 2526, Mall 3026 are the ISA bus, and they're treated as being a, a little bit more of a budget system in that if you had a, a flowing point coprocessor in there, that the, um, it would run at two-thirds of the speed of the of the 286 CPU. And so even though you had a, a, a 10 megahertz 286 CPU, this coprocessor would run at 6.66 megahertz. And that was just on how there was a, a particular pin that was grounded. If you had the newer 287 XL coprocessor, that was redesigned. It had actually a, a 387 core in there that was more highly optimized. That that would run at the um, same speed as the 286 CPU on that Mold 25, 26, Mold 30, 26. But um, the older um, numeric coprocessor that was out there, the 8287, just ran at that two-thirds of the speed of the of the CPU. Now on the MALS, the PS2 MALS 50, 50Z, and MALS 60, that numeric coprocessor was run at the full 10 megahertz, uh, the same as the 286 CPU. So that's just a distinguishing feature uh, to be aware of in these MALS as well. Um, Sometimes you'll find, and I have a actually quite a few of the of the eighty two eighty seven dash ten coprocessors around, and so even if you put one in the socket in this instance, this is only being run um, at, on an unmodified board at that six point six six megahertz. Now I plan to have a a, a later video that. Um, covers a modification that can be done to these planers to get that coprocessor, the older 80287 coprocessor running at that 10 megahertz speed. And of course, if you have a 287XL, you don't need to worry about that. It's, it's run at the, the speed of the, of the uh, 286 CPU on, on these this small 25 and 26 and small 3026. So I will be back with uh, other videos as I go through and get the Dallas modules uh, modified. These will be interesting because I don't think I have the, the diskette drive on this one marked as being good that I tested it immediately prior to, um, um, as it shows, Christmas Eve of, 1999 that I went through and tested it. I, I have some other diskette drives um, that I have set aside that way that are marked at that same date. And I'll have to figure out if that diskette drive is still good. But some of these systems, um, and I think I got them from the, straight, the state transportation department. And a lot of them have the uh, hard drives on there that I, I'm not even aware of what the contents of those hard drives are, uh, whether they've been uh, wiped clean or if I've done any prior work on that to, to erase the, you know, to be a good steward and erase that data off of there. But um, it'll be a little bit intriguing for me to see if there's uh, what I have in place on there because I haven't touched the system in, in a few years. But so that's all I have for this particular video. If you do like it, click on that like button, please. Please subscribe to my channel for other content like this. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.